Well, I was sitting here waiting for the <laughs> waiting for the fares to conclude. Looked like Victor Cruz raced good, um, and then they got must have got that weather pattern that seems to be in Ontario right now. My wife said there is a they were calling for a tornado in Guelph. That would be like a snowstorm in Jamaica. Doesn't happen very often. Although I should say, in the last couple of years, we've had you know tornado watches like the northern northern part of Guelph up into Alora and Fergus. Yeah, I, I hear once in a while they can, but we're closer to the southern end, um, you know, only a four or five miles off the highway. So, um, yeah, some inclement weather today in Guelph. Uh, it's nice here at Northfield Park. And then I guess it turned uh, turned for the worse quite quickly at Bowling Green also. Victor Cruz was second race, good as I said, and then uh, Real Fear was canceled. So they're going to bring Real Fear back here. I suppose we'll school them tomorrow morning. Um, I'm going to school full heart, so I may as well school, may as well school real fair also, I, I guess. Um, a pretty good night so far, obviously, um, uh, uh, one, two, skip a few. Yeah, she was headed, you know, I thought she should have trotted away and won in, you know, 56 and a piece, 57, but she was headed and fought back the win, so, so, uh, still some fire in her belly for sure. Uh, I don't know if that's her last start for us or one of her last starts. I know I uh, had a great conversation with one of her clients, David, who was a little um, concerned that maybe we were moving Skippy too early. And then there's a there's a, a another client who wanted to move Skippy right away. Um, you, you see that rift this time of year. Some people want to stay. Some people want to go. Um, but at the end of the day, I believe that, you know, Skippy's class is she's not a Buckeye filly. I know... There may be some people out there that believe she is, but they're just wrong. And, you know, sure, she may go somewhere and, and win in 54. Who knows? But um, I, I can't say that she won't. All I can tell you is she's gone as far as she's going right here. So whether that means that we're inferior or, or whatnot, I don't know. All I can tell you is is that Skippy is a nice Philly 57 trotter. It still is nice to have a 56, 57 trotter. And, and no doubt in my mind, she'll progress as her racing career goes on for whoever, and she'll trot 55, 56, 57 her whole life. She'll be an honest mare because that's what she's always been for us, right? And people forget that. I know that people get, you know, you get bogged down with how, how, how much she tried and how good she was at two, and you believe that that should extrapolate into the three, four, five-year-old season and beyond or whatever, um, but it doesn't always work that way. And I think as you, have an op as you operate a stable, as you have a stable, as you train horses and you understand... Um, and you get to see that for your own. It's hard to it's hard to quantify that and grasp that sometimes for people. Uh, but that's just human nature, right? You look at the horses and you think this horse should be able to do this. Well, so do we. But unfortunately, horses don't really care what you think or what I think or anybody else. They do what they do. And one, two, skip a few did her work well tonight. She was a winner. Winners win. I say it all the time, and that's the truth. The other horse had her beat and was not a winner. Skippy fought back and put her away and. Drove away and got her picture taken. So that's what it's all about. Uh, the issue that I have with Skippy is there's not a lot of classes left. She might be able to do up in that class where Blue Tesla is. Uh, and I suspect we may even try her up in that class next week. Um, but I think the next time that the preferred sale comes along, you know, somebody was asking why she wasn't in the last preferred sale. It's simple. She was supposed to be. The problem was is that this win was supposed to happen last week. And I wasn't going to put her on public auction coming off a terrible line, ninth with two breaks or one break or whatever, and then the race is being canceled. Nobody can see the races were canceled unless they look. And, um, you know, canceling isn't winning. So we got the win tonight. Uh, if we get her back in next week and she races up in that class, then so be it. Uh, if she can do, great. If she can't, then... Um, that only strengthens my opinion of, of where we're at with Skippy. So very happy with with uh, with a win. Going to take it. Uh, happy that the Philly race good and showed some grit and determination that we we've come to know from her. Uh, we've come to know from her, and she fought back on to win. Now uh, I've been doing a lot of talking about one Philly because in the back of my mind I didn't really want to talk about the other Philly. High Enterprise. Very disappointed with her uh, with her race tonight. My concern with her is, um, and this is the time of year when this happens. Is she as good as I hope she was? Is she as good as I thought she was? Here's a filly that was a week or two away, you know, when Swinging Senorita raced at the Meadows 
High Enterprise raced at Northfield Park way back when. And really, that were, those horses, those two horses were the front runners at the time. And Smoking Hot Irish Girl. Remember, we had all the fillies in the mix. Full heart, we knew that she was a little, as Addie would say, a little cuckoo. Um, and it would take a little time. Um, Whispering Song, and you know, a little frail, I was trying to protect her. She wasn't going to the to the next generation. Then we had the other fillies, right? Coupe de Ville, same thing. Seemed fast enough, but I think that would be pushing it to send her there. So then, now as we peel the layers away, we're down to three fillies. Smoking Hot Irish Girl, Swinging Senorita, High Enterprise. Any one of those three could have actually got the nod, depending on how they raced. We raced Smoking Hot Irish Girl, remember? She came up sick, was on a line real bad. Still raced pretty good. Showed that she, she's got talent. Right? She, she'll come forward. And these last two weeks, as I said, were just bad races, but she's already shown that she's had that two minutes last half, 57. You know, show, she was going to win uh, the Sire Stake here two weeks ago. She was going to win, made a break on the front end. Like, these were things she, she was going to accomplish. She'd been there, done that. Um, and then Swingy Senior Reed obviously came forward, win, second, look great, just handy. And quickly, uh, just in one start, made it clear that she was probably the one going to the next generation. Then in the next start, kind of solidified that. Uh, and as she was solidifying her stance as our flag bearer in the next generation, High Enterprise was doing the opposite, kind of floundering. She had that uh, pitiful start here where she was sick. Um, and it came a horrendous last quarter. And then I raced her back at the Meadows, thought she was better. Again, kind of a weak last quarter. Her mile at Sayota on the line wasn't horrible, but tonight just following. Left line, she popped a splint left front. Coming out of every turn, she was on the left line really hard. Didn't really have a lot of pop to her. I'd said to Jason, let's draw her blood to make sure, but quite frankly, um, all that talent that I thought I saw all year, was it shallow? I, I want to say no, but I, I really have no information. To, I don't have an argument to make to you for for high enterprise. So I think at this point, um, with everything going on, it's a totally different situation from Magic Tong. You know, the, the residual value it, it just isn't there, right? Or um, Hill Street Blues. You know, totally different, but similar. But not totally different. Similar, but different. I think... This filly here, is it, could it be immaturity? Could it be allergies? Could it be the heat? Could it be a million things that it may or may not be? Yeah, it could be. It could be a lot of different things. It could be none of them. But I don't think she's in a position right now where I'm interested in selling high enterprise. So uh, if her blood comes back, good. If we're going to a fair in the next week, maybe we could throw her in. If her blood comes back bad, we'll try, or do our, try and do our best to get that splint cooled down and uh, prepare her for the Buckeye at Urbana. Whether we go to Urbana or not with her, it's coming to the end of her season, I think, where we're just going to turn her out. Because uh, she is very immature, very frail. She needs to grow up and become a bigger horse. My concerns as I sit here and talk to you, quite frankly and truthfully, are, is she a good horse? I don't know. I don't know. She hasn't shown the grit and determination that Swinging Senorita has shown. The understanding of her work that that filly has shown. She's lacking in a lot of areas, and I'll put up with all of them, but sheer talent is the one that's most concerning to me. I can't make her be better. I can't make her be faster. I can't make her be more durable. We can make her healthier. So we're going to take her blood tomorrow. If her blood comes back good, I think we may be able to prep her for Urbana. She'll get around half real good. She'll get around that track. We'll race her in Urbana. And likely soon after put her away, I would think. As I sit here right now in my car, I race eight at Northfield Park. That's that's where my head is. Things may change in the next in the coming days. But very disappointed. Very disappointed in her uh, in her effort and her output tonight. I expect more from this filly. I wanted to see more from this filly. And we may see more from this filly. But I can't stick my neck out. Um, you know, I already got burned with Whispering Song and and 
smoking hot Irish girl they raced terrible last week well one one race they both raced terrible in Salem so I'm left here doing the best we can trying to prepare fillies that may or may not want to or be ready to do battle there was two obviously we raced in Scioto that were not ready not as ready as I expected them to be and one that I don't know really wants to do battle right now but of all those fillies um, I don't think personally I don't think that any of them need to go right away um, full heart even showed a little bit of little bit of intelligence the other day at Scioto I'd love to see a good mile from her tomorrow morning here at the schooler at Northfield Park and then we'll go from there now who do I have left I have a drive in the 11th and I have blue Tesla in the 13th I love driving I haven't driven blue Tesla I schooled her once man she's a looks like a Cadillac and feels like one behind um, you know one of those horses that wasn't really doing wasn't doing what they needed they needed her to do where she was and she certainly has done everything we've asked her to do here she's been a real uh, I guess bordering on diamond in the rough so far you know she has some classes to move up into and if we really like her she's got tons of classes in Ontario in the fall also so I think we had a lot of fun ahead of us with blue Tesla and then obviously today we made a purchase for the stable we're always trying to move out some of those horses that just aren't doing we did that this week with a with four of them uh, in the preferred sale and we brought a new horse in uh, today uh, JK Mickey Mantle a three-year-old pacing colt that uh, has one win, 25,000 made in 11 starts. He paced him 150 and won his last start at the Meadowlands. Um, not what I would say a stake cold. He was in the Tompkins gear, Tompkin gears, um, seventh, finished seventh, paced 50 and one, but not really a factor. The last time he was in a, a top flight sire stake event, he was like 90 to one. But again, that's the deepest end of the ocean here in Pennsylvania. These are sire stakes and open events. So, um, Hopefully we can get him home. All he has to do is race numbers of two, numbers of three, numbers of four. By the time he makes the money to get a numbers of four in Ontario, you know, a large portion of our, of our money back. So we paid 69000 U.S. for him today. Um, I guarantee you the people that owned him before us, uh, the three brothers stable, the Katz brothers, um, their expectations were high. The mother was a world champion. The, the sister made 900000 I guarantee you. Their expectations are high. Ours don't have to be any more than he shows right now. If he can stay as good as he shows right now, we'll have nothing but fun with him moving forward. Uh, as you see, our calendar start to tick down towards, for those of you that are Maritimers, down towards gold, the Gold Cup and Saucer. We do have plans in the works to send one, if not two, horses to PEI. Um, you know, it's funny. Harry said, Anthony, I don't want to go to PEI, but uh, I think Cinture would fit great in PEI. He was of the belief that I was going to go drive him. And growing up in PEI, Harry Poulton, like many kids, always wanted to dream of winning the Gold Cup and Saucer. I do too, but I'm not going to interrupt my schedule at the stable to go down to PEI to try and win the Gold Cup. I spent the better part of a decade <laughs> trying to win the Gold Cup. So uh, I'm Anthony McDonald from the stable now. And, you know, if, if I need to be somewhere else, I'll be somewhere else. If I can make it to PEI, then great. Uh, I know that Mark Beckwith is taking... Um, is sending uh, Patrick the Piranha A down there, down to PEI. Jamie Smith, my friend, is going to take care of the horses in conjunction with Melissa Beckwith. Uh, so I believe we'll probably just send Sintra down with the same crew. Since Harry's not going to go down, uh, we'll probably just send Sintra down, and he'll be in the care of Melissa Beckwith and Mark and Jamie also down there. Um, for any of you that are clients that want to go to PEI, I would implore you to. It is a great time, and if you guys are harness racing enthusiasts, you are going to want to uh, be in Charlottetown, Prince Edward Island uh, throughout the middle to latter part of, uh, of August for sure. It is a great time, and it is a sight to behold. If you, love, if you love racing or you like something like the Little Brown Jug, you'll love Prince Edward Island also for the Gold Cup. So uh, many of our clients go down every year. Uh, and this year you have more than enough reason to. There is a very, very good chance that you are going to see Sintra and Patrick the Piranha in PEI. If nothing else, there's no, there's no. oh, Anthony wants to go win his race in PEI. Yeah, I do, but at the same token, they do race for $100,000 this year. So it's a big race for us, big race on the calendar, and a good race for these two horses who have both had great starts uh, for the stable.ca. So with that... A little, a little uh, blabbering, but with that, I'll let you guys go. Um, it's a nice night here. I just saw a weather advisory pop up 
I don't see any rain clouds, so we should be fine. Um, I hope you guys are having a great week. Uh, having a pretty good run again. We had the win with Nothing But a Dreamer. We had a win with, very important win with Coupe de Ville. Uh, I just want to clarify something. I know a lot of people had said, hey, she only went 2.9. Is that fast enough? Speed-wise, she's been fast enough. The flat line yesterday was to get the, the hobbles on. And for those of you who may not remember, uh, a couple of years ago, I'm a Lovely Lady went to that exact fair at this time of year, put the hobbles on her. She won her race in 2.11 and 3. It's a bad track. It's deep. And then come right out here five days later and trotted in 56-3 first start ever with the hobbles on so uh, maybe a trend maybe a trend but i'll tell you what 2.9 or 59 coupe de ville looked very professional in her hobbles the other day very happy with what i've seen from this philly over the last 10 days um victor cruz was good to a bounce back a lot of people knew he's a little sick a little sick and then he kicked the wall and bruised his uh i think left hind ankle uh but looked very good today very happy with him so we have real fear <clears throat> who will likely be making his last start for us uh in urbana Victor Cruz will be in Urbana. And then the Phillies, a number of Phillies, and everybody descends on Urbana. Uh, I think it's next week. Should be a lot of fun. Uh, i got to check the exact dates because uh, I also told Jim Jim uh, Eaton that I would go to <laughs> Springfield, Illinois. Never been there. Not really. I'm not really a bucket list guy. I'm 45. I'm not there yet. But uh, Springfield, Illinois is a historic track. I'd love to go there. Also, we have... Uh, this is after Carter Michael Dio races in the Meadowlands. I'm trying to get down to the Meadowlands on Saturday also. Um, what else do we got? Uh, we got Urbana next week. We get Chicago next week. We have next week. Every week's a new week. So with that, I'll let you guys go. Uh, a lot on our plate, a lot going on. A new addition today, as I said. J.K. Mickey Mantle is now our horse. He'll be racing in Mohawk. Um, I have to check the stall schedule. I know we just sold Century Invictus, so does Harry, but we did just bring the the other new trotter over. Uh, who the hell? Who the hell? So uh, does Harry have room? Does Dominic have room? One of those two guys will likely get J.K. Mickey Mantle starting next week. We'll like to see him in the non-winners of two at Mohawk. Take care, everybody.